Pelegi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. Today we're revisiting a project that I built a couple of years ago. This is a four foot LED light fixture. The piece you see here in the middle is where the power supply is located and that's the wire just spooled up. It's just a long extension cord that I cut the end off of and uh, there's a little chain hanging. So when you pull the chain, the light turns on and you actually have a remote control that you can use to change the color. You can also put that through different you know, fade patterns, chase patterns, whatnot. And uh, well, here's the controller. It's just a 44 button controller. The unit, it's, you know, meant to replace a, a fluorescent lighting fixture. I was originally going to buy a fluorescent fixture and just mount the LED tape inside of it, but I thought, well, that's kind of the cheap way of doing it. So I went and bought some wood. I have this trim piece I used here. And, uh, you know, just hung it from my ceiling, and it works. In fact, it's kind of hung central to the room. The desk used to be centralized underneath it. And uh, around the holidays, I can turn it on, put it to a color. Let's say orange for Halloween. Or, you know, with this remote, you can actually dial in a specific color. So I could turn it to purple or whatever I want. Maybe a funky green or something like that. And light the windows up. Or uh, I could have it scroll through various different colors if I want. Now, there are more modern versions of this concept where you can make it go like red, white, and blue, or red and green for Christmas, so on and so forth. But what I'm actually going to do with this today is I'm actually going to take the LED tape off of this and replace it with just white LED tape. And this is the same white LED tape that I've used in prior projects, um, namely the two sign videos that I've done here. Because... I need a brighter light above my table, my workspace here, especially with doing these YouTube videos. And I think that's going to be the better way to go. Plus, I have chains to make this hang closer to the desk than this is right now and make it more of a desk light than just a general area light. So with that, I'm going to plug this in right now and give you a quick demo of what it looks like as is. And uh, I'll show you an inherent problem that kind of just started happening one day to it and well let me get that extension cord plugged in and we'll get set up here now once you have this plugged in if you pull the power cord it'll come on but it actually won't come on because you have to use the remote to turn it on I'm not sure if you're going to hear that on the camera over the noise of the other fans in the room but it does have a fan in it to keep it cool which is mounted on the top I did have all these holes over here on the sides to try to get the air to suck through, but it didn't really work out that well, so I had to put a space underneath here. Um, what I did do is mount a switch on there so I can actually turn the speed of the fan down. Unfortunately, the particular fan that I picked for the project doesn't like the lower voltage that I have on that switch. Um, so you have to turn it to the high voltage setting get it to go high speed and then turn it to the low voltage setting and to keep it spinning. So that'll be something I'll have to fix when I get this thing apart too. But if I grab that remote, I'll show you what this looks like. All right, now watch. When I turn it on, you can see it's red. However, if you look at the remote, when I push the red button, it turns green now it never had that problem before and I didn't change anything with the wiring I just turned it on one day and the colors were crossed I'm not sure why um, I have a feeling it has something to do with the little uh, microcontroller that they use in the LED control board but I'm not sure I haven't taken it apart I've just kind of dealt with it you know if you hit blue it goes blue if you hit green it turns red and if you hit red it goes green so it's one of those things that you just have to deal with. Now the batteries are dying in the little remote here. Um, let me shut some lights off in my room here so you can see how bright this thing is. 
I have one big main fan light here and then I have uh, that light now and a 10 watt LED desk lamp and if I uh, zoom out here on my desk you can see that the white desk lamp that I have there the 10 watt light really washes the table nicely and the green kind of fills the room the rest of the way and I apologize for the creaky tripod this is a really basic tripod that I got when I got this camera as a kit which also has an external microphone on it and that picks up that noise a lot I am working on getting a new tripod that you won't have that problem anymore hopefully now here's the thing about RGB strips when you put them into white that is a pretty nice white on camera but what you're actually getting is is each little bulb has to light red green and blue together for you to get the white effect these bulbs since they have red green and blue together on the same actual LED it's not so bad but some of these strip have a separate red green and blue bulb and when that happens you know you'll you'll won't get the white effect as nice now it does look really good on camera but when I look into the room it has a slight greenish blue tint to it and uh, yeah it looks great on camera but <laughs> the strip I'm going to replace it with is going to look a lot nicer now I'm going two ways about this I can put the white and the color on at the same time and just have a switch to toggle between the two or replace the strips since there's a problem with them anyway and uh, leave it at that so I haven't decided that yet um, but with that I'm gonna take this off the ceiling here we're gonna you know do the autopsy of it and figure out where we're gonna go here's the top side of the unit you can see how that uh, string goes up to a toggle switch that just kind of you know pulls and then here's that speed select switch middle is actually off you can shut the fan completely off but I have noticed that that power supply does get pretty warm now when you buy this tape it comes in rolls like this that's usually about 16 feet long you can cut them in segments this is the double row tape I mentioned that I'm going to be replacing or adding to this unit um, when I built this, I used an entire roll of that 16-foot tape, and um, I just doubled them up next to each other to make this nice and bright. Now you can also see that what I started doing was there's a, a kind of a waterproof coating on these, and I had a feeling that taking it off might make this brighter, so I started actually removing some of that in sections. And well, now it just looks messy. You know, you can imagine that kind of stuff yellows with age, and then the places where it's not yellowed is nice and bright white. So, it's another reason why I think I might just replace this because it doesn't look as good as it did anymore. This piece here that you see is the IR infrared um, eye, it's basically just hot glued all around. And what I did was put a little piece of tape over the top of this. And this entire thing was spray painted with silver reflective paint. So that's why it has that bit of a sheen to it. There are four holes, two here, two here, that there are screws in and they're recessed. And once you undo those screws, the wood box comes off the other side and that allows you access to the power supply section. There's also a little hole right here that has a green LED indicator light behind it, which is obviously off right now but you could see this if this lit up. It's just to let you know that the power supply is on um, when the lights themselves are off, even though the fan is quite loud as it is. All right, I got the four screws out the bottom, so you can see that this just becomes loose. If I tip this, you can see there's the switch mode power supply. This is the LED control module. This wire here is what goes over to a little board that I have that interfaces with the actual strips. This plug here is what comes off of the power supply and goes into the actual uh, control circuit. Um, 
this does have quick disconnects here. So if I do this connect here and the other connect here, this will come apart and then I can take the shell completely off and I'm gonna do that right now. Let's see if I can get a little closer in here. It is a bit dusty in here. Apologize for that. I managed to clean off the outside and didn't get in here yet. Now, if you look at this, it's this doesn't make much sense. It's just a mess. Um like I said to this a few years ago, I was just getting back into electronics. You know, I had a brief little spurt when I was kind of interested in it and put it to the wayside. And then all of a sudden I started tinkering with these things and building wood boxes. And it was kind of a, a little period, you know, over the summer, just spending some time out in the shed doing this kind of stuff. And this is what I came up with. But now... Um, I know a little bit more what I'm doing, I guess you could say, so I look at some of the things here and I, I realize why I did it then, but now I look out and say I could have done it better. So this is all chances to fix this up. For example, this connector was a pain in the neck to find. I bought this from Jane Co. originally and I didn't realize it had these connectors on it. I thought it was going to have some nice uh, terminals on it that I can just hook the wires in to screw them on. It didn't. Plus this is an open frame power supply the ones I use now or have a little cage over them and um, that makes it a lot easier too so that's one thing um, I picked this particular one because of the power rating on it it's on the other side I'll have to flip the board over to, to see it I don't remember what it is offhand I also put a strip of the LED tape inside the box here to kind of light this box inside although you don't really see it that well um, but yeah, it was a pain in the neck trying to find these. I had to actually source them from Mauser. And I got the wrong ones originally. And I had to wait for another order to come in. And yeah. So, lesson learned. But this is the power cord. The ground uh, and the neutral fault of power cord, I should say. And the hot is off the lead of the switch. And then if you look inside here, if I could tip it to the camera. The switch is right here and the wire just comes out the extension cord and just plugs, you know, just screws onto a terminal in there. And there's a nut on the outside here. If you undo the nut, this thing will actually come right out. Just like that. And there's another nut here. If you undo this, this will actually slide off and you can access the screws. Pretty simple. So that's the whole AC side of this. On the DC side, I ended up putting a switch in here to switch between the power supply, the 12 volt power supply output from here, and a 5 volt regulator. And that's all going to come out of this. It's not necessary. I'm going to use a quieter fan. And you can see here's the little regulator with a heat shrink on it, uh, a heat sink on it. And this is just wired directly uh, to a switch. Simple, you know, nothing fancy. It's just a fan. So I'm going to go ahead, you know, simplify this a little bit. Here's that plug. This is actually what normally goes to the end of the strips, but because I have them hooked up in the series parallel configuration here, I have them hooked up to this terminal strip. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to eliminate all this. And uh, be right back when I do that. Here's everything all apart. You can see the little board that I made. I managed to label it with the different colors of the wire of, of choice. Unfortunately, I didn't have the red, green, blue, black wire. That's the standard. I use this white, black, red, green wire instead, but it does the same thing. And this was just the four pins that the controller plugged into and it gave you just a terminal block output. Just a simple little circuit board that I came up with. Um, I put little feet on it with uh, the ends of the boards. Let's see if I can get the camera to zoom in on this. And uh, not much to this board. It's basically all it is. You can see there's just some jumper wires in the back. Power supply is a 12 volt, 5.25 amp from Synpro. Got this from Jameco. It's uh, pretty nicely built. I'm not a design engineer or anything like that, so I don't know how many components it should have on it but for switching power supply based upon the ones I've seen in my hands across the you know years this one looks like it's pretty well built and it's pretty solid it does have a nice bunch of different pins on it 
So you can hook up directly to these if you want and you know, go to different circuits if you want. And then it has the same on the other side for the AC voltage. Inside the box is basically this uh, jumble here. Now this is the piece that connects to the output of the power supply. One of these leads plugs into the controller and then the rest of this kind of mess goes off to some different components here. I just kind of blobbed all the wires together. I'm gonna I'm gonna redo this. It's sloppy. Um, like I said, the the voltage regulator, this the switch, this is all operates the fan. This is all getting eliminated from the circuit. Not needed. All, only other thing is the AC side, which I showed, and that's it. That's all she wrote. I could make this smaller, but I wanted to make airspace in there. In fact, I. I think I had this made up for something else already. I just kind of adapted it for this project. There's really not much more to this, so now it's a matter of figuring out what I'm going to do with it and putting it back together from there. I have the whole board stripped down. I removed the piece in the middle here that was the IR sensor. You can see the paint is missing. I also stripped everything off the other side and just left the leads. Here's the wire pulled through for the, uh, again, for the IR sensor. And what I decided to do was is leave the original RGB strips on here. And I cut a piece of the new white strip and I'm just gonna put the white strip right in the middle, which will also hide the old holes that I did. And what I'm gonna do is now I'm going to take the uh, silicone cover off of this because I don't need it. I'm going to attach the tape on the back of this. I'm going to tape it to the board after I rub this down with alcohol just to make sure there's no dust or anything on it. Once that's done, I have to drill some holes in the end that the wire is going to come through. Probably going to use the other end over there because that's the end that the red, green, blue wires come through. and. Um, well, I'll come back to you at that point. Double stick tape comes in these thin rolls and I just double up the rolls on the LED tape. I get this from super bright LEDs. Here we have the strip taped in place. You can see I have it centered in the middle. I'm going to use the top end up there and I'm going to drill a couple holes and solder a couple wires to the end of the strip and run them towards the middle of the board well they'll be connected to the power supply what I'm doing now is going to make a list of all the different color codes and what their function is I also went and made a modification to the power supply where I'm going to use these leads in place of the LED that was included with it Originally, I was using the 12 volt rail to power the LED indicator for this, but now I'm just going to use the one that came with it since you can't see it. Also, I hot glue down this connector board so I can just connect these wires right to this and it'll make it a lot neater. I have determined the color codes for the wires for the red, green, blue, and for the white LED strip. Then what I'm going to do now is, is connect it to the block and I'm going to test the functions of the controller just to make sure that they're right based upon the actual uh, infrared eye. Now originally the way I had this, this jack was connected to this um, connector here which went to the, the board and there was other parts that went to this and uh, it was just a mess and one of the things was an LED light uh, indicator now there is one on the board here and I went ahead and desoldered it and put these leads in instead so that's going to eliminate one of the things that you need this for the other one was the fan and I think I'm going to either use the pads that are on here or try to tap it off of this strip somehow but with that I'm going to go ahead and put this together and we'll come back when I have another report Decided to put this project on hold for a little while last night because it was getting late, I was getting tired, had to go to bed. 
So I'm back to it now this morning. And between what I shot and what I did then and now, I'll show you a couple things. I took the controller off because it shot. It's not working for me. I got everything hooked up the right way like it was originally and the colors are still wrong. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a new one. Plus the controls were dodgy. I put a new battery in the remote just making sure that wasn't the problem. I'm not sure if it's the eye, if it's the controller board. doesn't matter. It's cheap enough. I can just get another one. The rest of the circuit's all ready. I went ahead and got the harnesses up here nice and tidied up. A power cord here is ready for when I get the new controller. This will just plug right in. So basically the way this works now is the AC comes in from the cord. When you've turned the switch on, it gets enabled. This connector here connects to the AC input side over on this side of the power supply. Obviously converts it to 12 volt DC, which comes out the end over here. I have a 5 volt regulator which I'm going to stick to the inside of the lid here once I get this into position. And that's the selector switch for the fan. Unfortunately, I couldn't find another 80 millimeter fan that matched the size I put in here. So I have to work with the parts I have. I don't really feel like spending too much money on this, plus that's the point of the project. So I'll wait till the controller comes in to call it a complete project. But for right now, the white lights work, and that's what I wanted this to do. Um, so on the side over here, I put the speed selector switch for the fan next to the RGB or white select. Now they are middle position off, so you can actually turn the fan and the um, lights off and not have them, you know, start the power supply on. Put it in like a standby mode if you'd like. But I'm going to label these switches so I, I know it's there. I do have to figure out how I'm going to make the hole for the pull switch. I already have one, but the lights currently cover over it. I can remove just one segment of light. It's not going to make much difference in the grand scheme of things. And pass the light, you know, the wire back through like I originally had. Haven't decided that yet. The only thing I know I have to do as well is, is just tidy these wires up to the top of the lid so they don't hit the fan. Because that's happened before as I put this together. But this simply would just sit on top like it did before, screws in from the bottom. Not much has changed with that. You can see I have a third set of wires coming out here. Um, the two on the ends are for the RGB and the one in the middle is for the white. That's pretty much all there is to that. So I'm just going to finish putting this together and we'll see what it looks like lit up as I kick the camera stand here. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for right now. Let's show you what this looks like when it's put together completely. After some close consideration, I decided to relocate the select switches to the other side of the unit. So I have AC coming in on one side and I have the DC stuff on the other side. Just to keep the wires a little bit better isolation isolated. Also, just to keep them from bunching up in there. It's a lot neater this way. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the shell back on. You can see the switches coming out this side now. And here we have our near complete unit. I did the lettering on the label burner that I have. I have to find something to cover the holes up with that I don't no longer need. If I come over to the other side here, you can see. Just some basic lettering. Nothing fancy. I only have the one color, the black text on white label in a couple different sizes. Stuff's expensive. Ultimately, it'd be nice if I had clear label with white lettering or something like that on it, but alas, use what I got. You can see I went ahead and just put a dab of hot glue where the wires went into the wood and a couple spots here, like I did originally with the other wires, just to hold this wire down. Switches on this side, like I showed you, power on that side. I fixed the little problem I had with the gap as best as I could. You can see over here. This is basically just a, a patch-in job. It's an, it was an afterthought. I'll show you why. This is one of the reasons why it kind of takes me a while to do projects sometimes because I have to figure the best way to do it. So I wanted to relocate this pull switch, but I didn't really drill out the hole on the other side to do it in the case. So 
the pull had to come out the original hole which is right where I put this string of lights after I went ahead and you know solder this all together I, so I looked at it and said eh, it looks like it is missing something so I took the piece I cut and just kind of put it on a 90 here and well patched it in on the other side now in hindsight if I thought about it earlier I would have cut the tape here anyway because it lines up perfect from there to the end over here now if I did that I could have started the next one right next to it here and it would have been only a minimal distance difference in fact I probably could have spaced it you know almost the same distance that the lights are now anyway and you would have really noticed it as much and then at the end I could have just you know snuck it in over there or just had one you know extra but again hindsight's 50 50 it's something that you think about later you know I could always go ahead and fix it it's not really worth it this is going to be perfect now I, I did test this out slightly above the table here just holding it in the air and it looked pretty damn good to me so I'm going to put it in the air and it is daytime right now as you can see from the abundance of light coming through all these windows here that are obviously just shaded out but when I get this up here we'll see how much brighter it is based upon what the camera sees now and then we'll come back to it at nighttime here's the end result now this is your light source you have windows you have this light here is on and then you also have the ceiling light and you can see that the printer here that little cart is a lot brighter than it was before obviously I do want to see what this looks like at night as the sole light I'm just switch hands here that's without the ceiling light now the ceiling light is just a regular incandescent bulb obviously that scatters light a lot differently there are uh, 60 watts a piece there's three of them uh, whereas you know LED is a different kind of light but that's a uh, yeah, pretty nice I like it so far it's centered to the room like I said because the desk was underneath it originally but now that I have it in the corner there so I can use that wall it's a little a little off center but with that desk lamp there which if I shut off I'll show you you see that fills that corner in nicely I turn it back on and I turn this other light back on which is what I usually shoot with that's not bad come back nighttime see how this looks later as promised here is the room lit by just that one light ceiling lamps off desk lamps off that's it pretty bright it's uh, not as bright as I wanted it to be, but hey, for just having a single strip of that LED tape in here, it's pretty damn bright to me. Um, I am going to work on getting it centered over the desk a little bit, maybe. If I back up over here, it's pretty good. Now, if I turn my 10 watt lamp on, like I said, that fills it in a lot better. Not bad. I can hang it lower too. I have a uh, extra chain. I actually bought two sets of those chains when I bought this and cut a short set and a long set. And I already have the hooks on, the other one's ready to go. So I'll figure that part out. With that, I want to say thanks for watching. I will have a follow up video to this one probably in a couple weeks once I get the new RGB controller. And I'll show you how I ended up mounting it and what it looks like when you can change the colors and I'll also show you what the white looks like on the red green blue system compared to what just pure white looks like and thanks for watching subscribe for more